Hey everyone, how you doing out there? It's a crazy time, I hope you're doing okay. The moods are thick and fast and ever-changing, of course. I'm delighted to present to you this episode, which was recorded in February, back before. And uh, this was done during my trip to London, of course, the one that <laughs> ended up being a very long trip due to my illness. And it features my chat with the delightful Vinegar Strokes. This episode is brought to you by Hot Dog Club and by the fine folks at BetterHelp.com. More about BetterHelp later in the episode, but I just want to mention right now that if you'd like to join Hot Dog Club but previously have not been able to, now's the time to take advantage of the dollar tier. Now, we've spoken a lot about the $5 tier, the $7 tier, the $10 tier, the new higher tiers that include weekly Zoom hangouts, as well as the top of the reward tier, the executive producer tier, to which I'd like to thank Lindsay Rose, who is the title holder for that one. Now you can be a part of Hot Dog Club for a simple dollar. The dollar tier has been there before, but there was really not much to advertise about it because you didn't get much for it. Now, you're going to get a little monthly bonus, and details on that to come. As this is an insane time economically, a dollar is a nice way to tip, say you enjoy the show, support the show, and like I said, now there'll be a little bit of a bonus every month for the one dollar folks. Of course, the more desirable options are the 5, 7, 10 and above options, but, you know, really, whichever choice you make, you'll be making the right one. So head on over to patreon.com slash craigandfriends, see which tier works for you, sign up, and then slide into the thunder buns of Hot Dog Club. Something else I'd like to ask you to do, which I forget to do almost every single time I talk to you before the show, is to please rate the show on your podcast app. Of course, the five-star option is probably the best one, just because aesthetically it's nice to see all those stars filled up the right way. Uh, and then also, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And thanks for doing that, because that's a tremendous help to me and the show. It's whimsically volatile. Yeah, we were just uh, talking about directions, right? Because we were talking about how sometimes streets can be a little bit more confusing yes, than we I've, expect. I'm the worst with directions. I'm good if it's like, if it's very like A to B, like go here, go there. When it's when it's like I'm watching the pictures and they're doing like all these different squiggles and I'm like, but she's saying go this way. Like, even now I was like, yeah. it's doing, it's telling me to go down this road, but the, the squiggle on the map is giving it a full like, you know, zigzag line. So I don't know where I'm going. No, so. I know it's terrible. I am so bad with directions. If it wasn't for GPS, I wouldn't be able to find my way out of a paper bag. Oh my God. But I, I've, you know, accepted that. Thank heavens for GPS. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's there. It's like calculators. We don't have to use an abacus anymore. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I don't know how I would have coped being my age if I was in like 1990. Like, how, <laughs> how would I have coped? It was only like, what, 20 odd years ago? 30 years ago? I don't know. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I don't know how I would have coped without an iPhone. Well, then. I know. And I think back to when I would drive around with maps and stuff. And it's funny because my dad is like a map wizard. He oh, can, really? He can look at a map and chart out a whole course for a trip to Canada because I'm from Massachusetts. Okay. So go to Canada a lot. He would always try to instill knowledge of maps, but I feel that that's one of those things that you're either born with or you are not. Yeah. Maybe maybe if you travel a lot, especially as, I guess in the States where you kind of have to, if you're, if you're traveling somewhere, you're going to yeah. have to know where you go because it's such like a well oh, in the roads. Yeah. And dirt Labyrinthine. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've only been to New York in, in the States and, and Vegas and I feel like, okay, this is easy for me because it's like, this is a block. You go down this way. It's a grid. <laughs> I can follow that. But if I'm not having to go around all these swells or this kind of stuff, no, I'd, I'd be lost in America yeah. for sure. New York is like travel for dummies. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, go to this block. Okay, cool. What's the number? Where do I go? So, yeah. yeah. No, exactly. It's perfect. Well, that's what I like. Yeah, I like a little cliff notes yeah. kind of thing for my travel. So, how, how old are you? Oh, God, I'm 35 now. Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah, I'm 36 this year. I can't uh, cope. Well, uh, well, I'll be 44 oh, in my, uh, But you don't look days. at my like, babe. Well, you thank you, darling. Good. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's all, and that's what counts, right? Yeah, that's absolutely. What matters. Yeah, because age is really uh, just a number. It's just a number. Yeah. Um, you know, you can you can be 80, but feel 40, feel yeah. 30. Do you know what I mean? And that's, and that's the great thing. It's true. It's all about your spirit and what you're uh, going for. Yeah, really, spirit life. and life yeah. quality and that kind of stuff. Food. Yeah. And um, what part of town do you live in? So I live in a place called Enfield in North London. Uh -huh. So it's very, um, it's very boring. Like, it's, it's not much, we've got a Starbucks. That's, that's oh, well, great. Listen, we've got a cinema. That's big news. Yeah, we've got a cinema. We've got all, all the kind of like mod cons that you need. But sure. it's kind of like, it's just kind of a place you live, but you don't really hang out there. I, I, I don't hang out there anymore. Like mm -hmm. if you're straight, 
and a bit a bit chavvy and a bit like <laughs> grimy, then you would you would hang out. Then there. it's amazing. Then it's yeah, like, then it's, uh, it's the best place in the world. But I'm yeah. like, mm, no, I'm gonna travel out. <laughs> out, out. So literally, if I go go for a night out, I will travel a good hour just to go really? for a night out. Yeah, like South London, East London, Central. Like I will literally be in some other town and have to get like a cab back to my house. Okay, so, sure. Yeah, it's it's very expensive to kind of go out because obviously I wouldn't I wouldn't go out where, where I live because there's like. It's just not my. It's not much my on. Cool. Well, there's stuff on, but it's just not my vibe. Jeremy. Yeah, like, no, I get you. No, thank you. I don't. I don't want to go out with these girls or these guys because <laughs> I'd rather just go out and meet the meet meet the gays. Do you know yeah. what I mean? And like listen to these songs. Oh and... yeah, they're playing anything camp in in Enfield. They play <laughs> everything, which is a bit like you know stuff which is quite good, like garage music and like oh, sure. you know, all that kind of which is which is quite good. But yeah. I want to hear some steps and. Uh-huh. You know, some Britney and some Christina and some Beyonce. That's that's what I want. That's now, what I want in my night. In terms of favorite uh, artists, who are some of your favorite artists? Inspirations? Oh my god! Um, just in terms of music, I mean, I'm I'm really kind of eclectic in terms of what I yeah. love. So you know, I love I love Eminem. Oh sure. I know I, it's very strange, but I love Eminem. Hey, I'm listen, like, we all like what we like. You know, yeah. the thing is, it's all across the the board. Yeah. You know? And there's nothing. I was talking about this with DJ Fat Tony. Mm. It's really about the magic of music, right? And guilty pleasures. It's a ridiculous notion. Exactly. I yeah. think I think it's true. You, you you like what you like, and it kind of shapes uh, it kind of shapes your personality at different stages of your life. Like I had a big, massive like cru- not crush but musical crush on Pink. Like, sure. Pink was my Pink was my artist. Pink was my singer. Yeah. First album with it, it's a bit more R and B. I was like, I love this woman, and then she went down the whole kind of I say rock with like inverted commas because we know it's pop music or a few, <laughs> a few guitars. But um, yeah, I was like full on like my oh my god, Pink. Like her second album for yeah. me was like. It, the most incredible bit of work I've ever heard. Sure. And I feel like a lot of singers have like that one album, which mm-hmm. is just like, especially nowadays, like, maybe like like Beatles era, they've got several. Sure. But like, um, you know, I think nowadays it's a bit more, bit more contemporary. You're lucky if you've got an artist who brings out maybe two or three really great albums. Right. I think they have like one album, which is like the best, yes. uh, the best album they've done. And they put like um, Christine, Christine Aguilera, I feel like she can't peak past stripped and that okay. was a second album sure but then that is just a personal preference right. some people might say that christina's fourth album was the best one i think it's i think it's dog shit personally <laughs> but, um but it's no, the one that resonates with you yeah exactly i think that's what it is i think if an album especially a whole album where there's no, nothing you skip i think it's important mm. not to skip past anything i agree and you connect with every single song on there yeah then that is that is a great album for that artist. so for me pink had Pink's had a few of them, mm-hmm. but a second album was for me. I was like, "Oh my god, this is amazing!" And that's the one with uh, "Get the Party Started," right? Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah and like yeah. just just like a pill. And I think at that time I was feeling really kind of like angsty. I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm gay. And like, <laughs> I, I, I want, I love boys. But I'm feeling really angry about all this." So yeah, I'm like, oh. "But I want a party." And, yeah, uh, you do know know what I, mean? I, I just love a good old time and stuff. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so I love me some Pink. I love Kate Nash. Mm. Um. I love the Beatles. I love sure. I love Tina Turner so oh, much. Isn't she wonderful? She, she's she amazing. is. Just, she's simply the best. She's simply the best. She's better than all the rest. <laughs> And she really is like you know. Yeah. I feel like again, I look at a lot of the more kind of contemporary artists like like your Beyonces and your Christine's, Britney's, and sure, and they are all inspired by you know Tina's and Michael Jackson's and Janet Jackson, sure. And, um, you know the pioneers, the, the, yeah, the, the forefathers, the, etc. For yeah. you know, foremothers, if you will. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And I think what's great about that is that then that then inspires a lot of a lot of art which is coming out now, which is not necessarily just music, but also you know drag and performance, fashion. And like and and fashion. Design. Yeah, I yeah. think I think it's su- it's such a big circle that it kind of goes around it. Absolutely, and it always re- relates back to say like uh, Eurythmics mm-hmm. and David Bowie and Absolutely. Tina Turner sure. and Janet and Michael. It, it, it always it always circles its way back to where does it, where does this kind of originally come from? And it's those kind of artists and also the kind of the, the stylists who worked with them. You know, the people who worked with them to make to create the stuff. It's not just them on their own, right? No, of course, you know, it's a collaborative people. form. Yeah, exactly. So it's so I know it's interesting to kind of see. Where where the ideas and people's people's inspirations come from now, and they'll probably yeah. say, "Oh, I'm I'm inspired by this person." Well, actually, that person's inspired by these people. Sure, here. and that's the magic of discovering, you know, who yeah. inspired Bowie, who inspired Tina, and then you can delve into those worlds. Yeah. And it's an endless journey of just yeah. of discovering magic. Yeah, and you just discover so many more people who you were like, "I've never even heard of this person." Like, like just say Mae West. I love you know, I, I love comedy, for instance. Sure. So yeah. obviously, for me, I'll be like, "Oh, I I love Joan Rivers." 
okay, but if we go way back before that, we've got we've got Mae West who's giving it all these incredible one liners. Yeah. Um, and you're like, oh my God, this, you know, this who is this person? And you know, so it, yeah. I feel like it's great to sit down and really kind of research and just kind of d- dive into these worlds, as it were. Absolutely. Because it, it, you know, it impacts what you do as an artist and as a performer. It really does. Knowing the history empowers you to mm. move forward adequately Absolutely. and and impressively. Yeah. yeah. With comedy, so Joan Rivers, and what are some of the other? Oh God, for that... me, like Jeffy Joan Rivers, Lisa Lampanelli. I like sure. I like a bit of a bit of a filthy, woman, <laughs> oh, right. filthy bitch of, yeah. now and again. Right, same here. Yeah. Um, Whoopi Goldberg. Oh, I'm she's in love amazing. with. She's a, amazing. But I love her um, both both as a comedian and and as a character actress as well. Oh yeah. Um, I think a lot of my kind of go to comedians are actually all kind of character actors as well at the same time. Certainly. You know, and the amazing thing too about a really fabulous comedian is that they are an incredible dramatic actor. Oh yeah. Too. And this goes through like a Robin Williams or Jerry Lewis. Oh right? Robin Williams. Do you know what? I I was very upset with Robin Williams because obviously that year when like every every celebrity was just dying off oh, like yeah, every I know, month. I know. Like he was the one that him and Joan Rivers, I was like I feel like comedy is now dead. <laughs> that one hit me really hard too. Yeah. You know, World According to Garp, I just remember that was yeah. such an impactful film. Uh, Mrs. Doubtfire from, from yes. with Robin. I literally can't watch that the same way now, especially sure. the last speech where he's, where he sits and he's on his TV show mm-hmm. and he's texting the kids. Um, you know, some some kids have one mummy, some some have one daddy. And I literally sit there and I fully cry. In a, in like, like Before I would never cry. I'd be like, that's really like but now I fully cry about it. Maybe yeah. because I'm a bit older, a bit more emotionally, you know, connected, connected. to myself. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And I literally sit there and I go, This is the most most emotional thing I've ever watched in my life. I know sometimes these things is almost like these sacred texts, if you will. Yeah. They reveal more layers, further layers, uh, as you go on in life. You yeah. see things that were there, but they weren't revealed to you yeah. until you were able to see them. Yeah. yeah. I, I think that's an age thing. I think, you know, the older you get, the more kind of knowledge you get about who you are sure. and what types of people you want around you yeah. um, and what type of person you want to be around other people as well. Yes. Um, and I think you have to be a sort of person who is open anyway. Mm-hmm. Like that's kind of organically a thing about you where you are open to, you know, listen to your, to your emotions and, and your, and your life st- stage directions. You know, you've got to be, I think you've got to already be that kind of open anyway yeah. to then be able to go, okay, cool. This, this tiny little speech someone is saying i'm listening to it with fresh ears and it's a new it, i'm hearing it in a different way i've seen that film a hundred odd times sure but it's only kind of in the last like five six years i've gone i'm hearing it differently now yeah you know and you and you would it's you know it's anything with music or with film or a book or whatever you can you can read the same book a hundred times mm-hmm. and you know you might read some guy i've never noticed that page before yeah um and i think that's that's the great thing about you know just being, Foreign, yeah and, and, yeah, yeah. Our, Art and then being the kind of the, the receiver, wink, yes. wink, of of the of, <laughs> of the art. Do you know I mean, being yeah. the, being the person who's receiving it, and I, I suppose it's it's really interesting the way you look at it from the point of view of of you in your thirties to your twenties mm-hmm. to your teens to whatever. So yeah, it's yeah, hmm. really true. And also, you know, the part of the audience, if you will, or the receiver, as you said is just as important as the creator because without one, the other one doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I feel like you, you do, you know, obviously as a performer, and when you're a type of performer where you are creating work and creating a performance to give to an audience, even if that performance is you being a clown for the night, mm-hmm. um, I think you've got to go on and be like, I am trying to say this with with, with this. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's like getting a potato and painting it with different colors. Yeah. It's still a potato. It's still it's still <laughs> it still tastes the same, but yeah. I'm just giving it a new a new aesthetic, a new color um, for it to be. You know, for people to focus on the bit, like, oh, to, to represent something else, yeah, to communicate something else, yeah, and even exactly if you that. you couldn't on paper say what it is that you're trying to get across, you're you're getting across a feeling, a, yeah. a sort of a passion for something, yeah, and you basically want to spread love mm. with that. That's, that's exactly it. I think. You know, you you know, especially being on Drag Race and having having all these different like opportunities come my way. Sure. Um, you know, you do have a certain responsibility of the platform you got. Um, not so, not saying you've got to now be like an, an activist and be like, you know, I'm not going to change the world because I've been on three episodes of Drag Race. I can only do good things. I can that only are, do good are, things are, now. <laughs> but what, what, what I think what you can do is you you have got the responsibility to use it in a in a way which is going to impact. 
and and empower. Now, yeah. And when I say impact and empower, I don't mean, I, I don't really know where that kind of sits. It, it, just, sure. it just kind of sits somewhere which is right for you yeah. and right for the people who are your audience. That's and, right. And, you know, I'm not saying that you've got to try and, like I said, you've not, you've not got to change the world with it. Right. But it's, I think it's important to use it in, in the right way, which is, which is good for you as the artist and is, and, is, and is authentic for you as the artist. Yes. Um, and is kind of tangible for an audience, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and that's, that's all you can do, I think. Yeah, it's all about your intention with what yeah. you do. Obviously, there's the discipline of the actual, you know, the day-to-day, -day, putting the hours in and the accruing the hours, you know, because yeah. the, the whole thing of Malcolm Gladwell and the 10,000 hours and all that stuff. Yeah. And it's all about the amount of hours that you sat and obsessed and, and uh, mm. stewed and thought and really just pursued these things in your mind and then put them into physical action. And to that point, at what age did you start doing drag? Um, only five years ago. Amazing. So yeah. I was like 30. So mm -hmm. yeah, actually, so actually quite old, like compared, yeah. to, compared to a lot of people doing it at like 16, 15, 16. But that's another great lesson there too, because I, we talked about age and there is no limit on when you can start doing something. Mm. You can always start doing something. And I think sometimes people limit themselves. Yeah. Like, oh, I wish I could play piano, but I never did as a kid. So I can't now. No, you can right now. If that's something that you want to yeah. do, you can do that. Yeah, I think it goes back to what I said about, you know, being open. Yeah. And, you know, I've always been that sort of person who I've always felt like I've had to go around the back door for a lot of stuff. If not, and not like in that figure way. out your own way. Into yeah, I, yeah, exactly. That. Yeah. I think I've, I've, you know, even as a kid, like even I've been performing and doing like shows and youth theatres and that kind of stuff since I was a kid, I've always felt like I've always had to go around the back the back way yeah. to get a get a part not not even a, a lead role but a part that had a few lines sure. or or had a song a place um, in the yeah like a place that, that yeah. wasn't just ensemble now now saying saying that when I was playing the ensemble playing the tree number three and you know man number four i was still very into it i yeah. loved it i had a great time doing it i put as much much work as i can into that to make it the best it could be sure but i always felt like i had to be like okay i'm not i'm not gonna be just giving it on a platter because some, some kids are some kids are just giving stuff and they sure and that's and that's them um and that's just how it works and, yeah. and we can't focus on that and be you envious can't. jealous those are all um useless yeah pathways exactly and yeah. i think it's and i think it's good to kind of experience that when you're young so you can go through that thing of i'm i'm now jealous of that person's got that part where i wanted think about why you're jealous yeah absolutely and take that and then work through that what's triggering that what absolutely. is firing up in me then yeah and i think um the fact that i i had to i went all through that kind of thing of i'm not going to be giving stuff on a platter like i like so like i might be giving it so, like here and there de depending on the role depending on the part you know in youth maybe on like a cardboard stuff. tray but not a yeah, yeah exactly exactly <laughs> but i'm but you know i'm not gonna I, I'm, I know that i have to kind of always work a little bit harder than someone else sure um to have to have a better to have a better singing voice or to be a little bit funnier or to practice my writing or that kind of stuff mm -hmm. um and i still have that kind of mindset now whereas yeah sure even though yeah sure i've i've done i've done some west end great it's taking me 10 years after graduating drama school to get on the west end again it's the back door route. it's always been and it's all happened because of the drag essentially right so for me because i have been always very open to just going okay what what what's next and always kind of sticking in there it's a weird thing that you would think that if nothing's really happening over 10 years you'll go okay what else can i do um i'll just i'll give that up and i'll be a chef or I'll be an accountant or I'll just be a, a, an OnlyFans porn star sure, or something. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know right, what I mean? Right. I'll just try something different. Yeah. No, I was, I always kind of just kept in there, kept chugging away because I always felt, even from a kid, I always knew something was coming my way. Yes. I don't know what it is, but something is coming my way at some point. Yeah. And I think that's why I've always been very open to stuff because I'm like, I'll just say yes to everything within reason. Um, <laughs> and then, well, you know. And then, <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, and then obviously, if so, if, some, if something comes out of that, amazing! I've, I know that's that's great. And for me, like I always look at some because some people say, "Oh, you've just done a little little fringy show in Edinburgh." I'm like, "Yeah, but the show was amazing, and the message was amazing, yeah. and it, and the opportunity was amazing." Right. I, I class that the same level as Drag Race or the same level as West yeah. End because it's it's a great opportunity to 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 be part of something, something valid, something good, and something fulfilling. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so when so when drag happened, literally, it was purely because I kept getting like these weird like signs, people saying, "You should do drag." You should. 
I'm like, oh, shut up. No, no chance. Mm-hmm. I'd look terrible. It wouldn't work. Um, and then when the opportunity came for me to actually do drag and get paid for it randomly, yeah. I was like, all right, I'll fuck it. I'll just do it and see, see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Not expecting anything from it. And funny enough, when I did it, when I did it for the first time, it, it felt like the comedy act I was trying to put together kind of slotted in mm-hmm. really nicely. The personality I was trying to create on stage slotted in really nicely. Yeah. And actually everything I wanted to create as a, as a, boy mm-hmm. on stage as a, as a, as a stand up or a cabaret artist actually felt like it needed the wig and the makeup and the persona to really push it forward now I wasn't doing it to be like oh well, if I do this I'll definitely be on Drag Race <laughs> um, I think at that point Drag Race I, I, I'd only only ever watched um, like one, one or two seasons. Sure, and and it was a kind of a thing where there's no ulterior motive. Yeah, it was just a thing of okay, I'll try it because because I I see the value in in drag. You know, I've 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 got a lot of friends who did did drag and did like not necessarily drag queens in terms of I'm a fierce you no know, drag queen. They were actually like doing characters on stage. Yeah, so sure. I always, so I always knew that that kind of world, the cabaret world as well, right. burlesque and that kind of stuff, which is very strong in the UK. Yeah, huge, absolutely huge. Yeah. I mean, there was a big like influx of burlesque I mean I think drag is now the new burlesque in sure. a way because I remember where burlesque was massive there'd be yeah. classes popping up pole dancing classes pe- uh-huh. guys girls they would literally be going out to or do all these gigs and they would like, right, I'm doing burlesque now it's like great <laughs> do you know what I mean yeah. and I think drag has now become the new burlesque sure. in, in that kind of way and what's nice is they're, they're so in the same family as mm-hmm. well that it's just it's just perfect that, that yeah. these things are kind of blown up but yeah, I kind of was like, okay, this feels correct. And again, like, like you said, you you know, I was 30 years old. And some people would say, oh, it's much, it's much too old to be trying to do this. Sure. I'm like, well, you know, I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> so <laughs> I might as well. And what's great is- And I was, by whose standards? Yeah, it, exactly. Like, who's, like, who's making the rules Who's that? making the rules here? Um, and then over those five years, um, it's just been like, it's opened up so many doors to me. Right. And, I'm, and I don't, and I'm not even including Drag Race or the West End for that. Like so many other, doors pools of people yeah oh my god yeah community pools of people the community um acting jobs you know little kind of tv bits little kind of theater bits and that for me like i said is just as valuable to me as as the drag race and the west end sure level because you know i'm a and i'm a jobbing performer you know i don't i don't I, it's so weird that people go oh you're, you're now a celebrity i'm like well yeah i, I get that you would I get you would say that I'm a celebrity, and, and that's I get, how you classify these. Things. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah. and I get it because obviously you know I guess if a celebrity is someone who can, if it's someone who is walking down the street or walking from like Tesco or something, and they and they're getting spotted. Oh my god, then they go like they're getting spotted. I get cool. Yeah, maybe maybe I'm a sure. celebrity, but I I don't think of it like that. Yeah, I just I just think of it that like it's it's just another part of the of the platform, which is just it's like a a byproduct almost. Right, and that's not me trying to sound like oh like too kind of humble about it because no, it's great i'm lo- i'm loving life i'm sure. loving i'm loving the attention side of yeah. it I'm, I'm loving all that yeah you know the, the ego enjoys it sure of course but um but i'm always thinking to myself this is great but i need to write that script or i need to do that because because i know that that side of it the kind of celebrity side is so temporary you yeah, know, it's exactly. not it's not something which is gonna last. I mean, how how many celebs are there? Inverted commas celebs who have come and gone and they go because they're not they're not you know, they're not moving forward. Or focusing on the actual, the real work or the deep work. Yeah. Like Didi told me about this whole thing, the deep work, or the thing that's really pulled you into the sphere. Mm-hmm. And that's what it's about. It's about the, following those passions and, and uh, fulfilling yourself via yeah. those passions. Yeah, and, I, and you know, I get, I'll, I'd have more enjoyment getting a play up somewhere or a musical or a one-woman show or a song or something out there um, rather than rather than being like, oh, hi, how are you? Like, yes, it's me. But, do you know I mean, <laughs> do you know what I, mean? I, I get more, more, more enjoyment from, from the creative side of it, but I know yeah. that, that, that the kind of celebrity side comes with it. Yeah. And I'm loving it, but I'm also always thinking, okay, this is great, but I really want to get that, that woman show booked in the, to a venue so I can play that somewhere. Right. Just to really show what I actually can do. Of course. Um, as opposed to just stand, standing on the red carpet looking gorgeous, which I love as well. Well, it's fun, but those are the baubles and bangles that come along with actually doing yeah. the work of the stuff that you're pulled towards. Like, you know, you, when you said, you know, you weren't sure what was going to happen, but you knew that something was going to happen if you keep working at it. And I, I relate to that totally in uh, all the work that I've done and everything. There's yeah. something you're like, there's something here. There's something here. You can't write down what it is and you can't explain it to others, no. but it's there and mm. you just keep following that. And, and the only troubles you get into are when you disregard that yeah. and you think, uh, well, I guess, well, maybe I'll do this thing because maybe that'll 
lead to the like when you start thinking in this sort of um, cynical machination yeah. way, that's where you lead yourself down the wrong path. Mm, yeah, I always say to the girls, I, I chat to um for, for some reason um the younger ones like Blue, Blue Hydrangea, yeah. and Scaredy Cat, and they've so always been like, "Feel like, can we have some advice?" I'm like, "Yeah, sure, whatever, whatever you need to know." Um, and I always say to them like, because I think. At the moment, because this is all quite new, to, especially new for them. Uh-huh. Even though this whole kind of side of it is very new to me, because because I've had because I've been in the, ent- the entertaining business for quite a while. Sure. Um, on the side as an actor yeah. and as a drag queen, I kind of feel like I know a little bit extra um, than the other guys. Because observing too. a certain yeah. world and then actually stepping into it, it's a tremendous benefit to be an observer and soak that in and mm. take in. And, and I've been in. very lucky that I've been, I know a lot of people who have kind of had um, a platform kind of presented to them or they've already been on one, like, 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 like EastEnders, for instance, or they've been yeah. on the show and they've had, you know, and they've kind of, had many years of having that lifestyle and kind of adjusting to it and actually seeing the change of it being you know before twitter before before social media sure. then coming into that kind of world so yes i'd be very lucky to actually meet them and be like you know to meet them and work with these yourself to be one but just be like okay so how how do you find it and i get yeah. so much advice from them so that's been really useful um I don't know, I, I always say to them, like, you know, you might have one specific goal that uh, you want to have for, for your career. So, for, like, for instance, with Blue, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure her, her big thing is that she wants, she wants to have a makeup line mm-hmm. and, that, and that'll be her thing. Um, but I always say to her, like, you know, that makeup line could be your main goal. Like, imagine the tree. Like, yeah. that is the top of the tree. You're going to get to the top of the tree. But off the tree, there's all these little branches onto yes. performance, like some TV, some presenting, some this, some that. Mm-hmm. And that's just all kind of bonus, like I said, bonus branches. Off sure. this tree, but the main goal is to get to that kind of makeup line, whatever that goal is. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the beauty of it. And again, you have to be open, open to these things because you know you might go off on up this tree, you might start climbing it, and then go off onto this kind of just say like a presenting branch. Yeah. But that presenting branch could loop round into something else. That's right. Something else. And it's building the whole. Yeah. Time. Exactly. Yeah. And it's and it's kind of like I said, it's all about being open to these to these ideas and these suggestions because it might be something you've never thought you'd want to do. It might be something which is completely out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. It's like, I'm shitting my pants doing this. <laughs> what the fuck is going on? But, you know, it all leads to something. Yes, it does. Um, and I think that's why drag's been so great to me in that, you know, I, I literally, on the whim, I was like, I'll just do it because I'm doing nothing else. And yeah, and actually from that, it's led into different things. So for me, my, my tree has, has a massive goal at the end of it, but actually drag's been a branch I've jumped on and it's mm-hmm. been a very, very good branch. Yeah. And it's led me on to some lovely things. And it's the thing that's tied everything together. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly yeah. that. And, you know, I don't know how long this whole kind of drag fa- fad or fad is going to last for Mm -hmm. um you know people might be like i'm bored now what's next and they'll go back to i don't know I don't know, coloring books. I don't hula know. hoops. Just yeah. hula hoops, <laughs> crisps, something. Who knows? Do you know what I mean? They might go into something completely different. Yeah, sock but, cops. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just interesting and it's really nice to know that there is a, there is an industry which is kind of booming with this now. Mm-hmm. And it's an industry that is uh, the representation of queer outsider culture mm. it's the sort of distillation it's the yeah. coming together of that yeah and it's and it's, it's it's the new way to open up conversation as well that's true it's funny how um drag can really and i, I, I don't just mean men dressing as women i mean all forms of it yes, you know all, absolutely. every single form of it can really open up every kind of conversation and it be something that people will want to listen to mm-hmm. and it's not just like palmed off as oh shut up you freak do you know what I mean it's, it's actually people will, will listen listen right. to this person yeah. um, who is dressed as this strange creature sure. but talking so amazingly and, and eloquently about p- politics and where the country is mm-hmm. where your country is you know it's I think it's I think it's a great new it's a great new kind of TV lens as it were yeah it's not just a man, in, a man in a wig, it's all aspects of it, whether yes. it's just a little bit of makeup or it's the full hog, mm-hmm. um, whatever gender you are, whatever. Um, you know, everything's drag. I yeah, mean, everything's it, drag. It's and all pre- er- presentation yeah. and uh, how you form yourself and create yourself. Drag has literally been in every me- media for years and years and years. Yeah. But I feel like it's only taken till now for people to go, oh my God, I didn't realise. Like, Michael Jackson, drag. Yeah. Like, <laughs> It's yeah. drag. I mean, you know, it's a, Bowie. Bowie, drag, rhythmics, drag, Gaga, drag. Yeah. Um, you know, Bette Midler, Meryl Streep, yeah. drag. <laughs> yes. I mean? she, she's playing many, many different guys. Is it? People are either becoming 
more more accepting to this or they're becoming less scared or they're still scared because they're like we don't understand what this is and why it's now become you know right right in our faces well it kind of has to be it kind of has to be in your face so you so you listen and and know that certain views and certain situations that are happening right now all over the place right um it needs a voice Oh, sorry, go ahead. It needs a voice. It just needs a voice, yeah. There is this strange corollary with when the political times are horrific, a certain kind of joy in presentation. If we think about like the glam rock era, Mm. right? Which, of course, I love. And the new romantic era, you know? Yeah. Like the new romantic era is right at the time when Thatcher and Reagan are starting, right? Mm -hmm. Their horrific ascendancy. And then, you know, we have now the, the Trump and Brexit era. And what's going on now? This is going on yeah. now. And it's sort of a rebirth and a, a re-blossoming yeah. of these things. Yeah, because, you know, drag co- comes out of comes out of rebellion at the end of the day. Like, you know, a lot of, a lot of especially with the kind of gla- glam rock era and that kind of stuff, it yeah. comes out of rebelling against this idea that a society has to be this sort of way. Mm. Actually, no, that's not true. That's right. Um, and I think, again, it's that circle thing. It comes back. It always happens. You're always going to have a circle of mm-hmm. of rebellion from from a type of person or group of people because you kind of there kind of has to be. There has o- to otherwise, be, yeah. if there wasn't, we'll just be, you know, AI. We'll just be like, just giving it. Yeah, the we'll 1984. Just, yeah, 1984, thing, yeah. you know. Um, Speaking of your rhythmics. Yeah. What's, 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 what's <laughs> like a, a, a Pixar movie? Um, Wally. We'll just be Wally. Just, just, yeah. just, just fat people li- lying on a, on a Lido <laughs> just going around in circles. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think it has to happen all the time. I think, I think with the whole Brexit thing, oh my God, I, I do think people who are very passionate about um, the Brexit era and this whole situation, whole fucked up situation. Yeah. Um, they're going to be schooled a lot by a lot of different people. Mm-hmm. And that's quite what I like. Cause I'm not, I'm not a political person really. Like, I don't, I, I try and know as much as I can, but I don't know as much as say someone else does. Well, there's also an element too, that sometimes we have to protect ourselves a little bit from all the horrifying yeah. news that yeah. sometimes I dip out for a couple of days and, yeah. you know, and then I'll talk to my dad and he'll be like, did you see what happened with McConnell and Trump? And I, and I'm like, you know, I have to catch up actually, because mm. sometimes, you know, we're in a space, maybe we're a little vulnerable personally yeah. or whatever it is that sometimes there's too much terror in the Twitter feed yeah. and you just have to opt out. Yeah, exactly. I've, and, and that's, for your mental health, that's so important. So important. Right. Um, but I wouldn't say that I'm like, you know, political in that respect compared to say other people are. But I feel like I learn a lot more by watching say, queer artists and cabaret artists yes. do some sort of, um, you know, cabaret or drag related um, and focusing on, on politics. I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, okay, I, I get that more than listening to, you know, Nina Nana <laughs> on BBC <laughs> One going, so at, we're at 10 Downing Street and um, it's all a bit fucked up here. Do you know what I mean? I'll be like, I don't, know what, I don't even know what you're talking about. So I think from, from my brain, my yeah. kind of weird kind of creative brain, I need yeah. to see um, drag artists and perform this kind of stuff. So I go, oh, I get it. I get the view that you're coming from because, you know, it's a view which isn't just one person mm-hmm. it actually is a is a queer view in that a, in that respect right. the queer view which also interprets and um allows you to comprehend things through representational yeah. items and um uh iconography mm. and i think also what's amazing is i think that the public at large uh even those who aren't tuned in specifically to drag etc or glam rock or whatever it is uh that translates to them it, yeah. it's a thing that it speaks to everyone yeah uh because it's you're communicating you're relaying your thoughts and passions and even if again you couldn't put it down on paper like in a spreadsheet or on cnn or whatever right um this is what's coming through and that's why it's so impactful yeah 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 it's i think it's it's now or never is really important for you know, performers just get out there and be like, right, this is what I want to say. Yeah. Here it is. Um, Not being specifically political, but it's whatever you're feeling, it, it comes out mm, in the work. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I, I have like a whole kind of like housewifey thing at the moment as well. Oh, you love housewives? Yeah, life? like I, I love, like I love I've, I've really kind of latched onto this whole because obviously after even Drag Race, like you kind of you leave the show, and you just go, she said, "What do I need to really improve on?" So for me, the performance was always fine. It was just, for, it was just kind of the kind of aesthetic. Thing. just having a point of view kind of things I always mm-hmm. I kind of noticed oh Blue's got a point of view v- the Vivian's got a point of view there's like a point of view of, of and someone. you felt you didn't and I, yeah I felt like at that time because it was a year ago so I felt at the time I was like I kind of had a point of view of I'm just doing drag 
and, te- and telling a few jokes and, and singing some songs. But I didn't have a point of view of where my where my aesthetic was going. I think because I had a lot of different influences. Sure. So I didn't really know. I knew that I didn't want to do the whole kind of like, I'm a I'm a gorgeous, you know, long-haired, bare-legged queen. Like, yeah. no, thank you. I wanted to do like proper drag. Yeah. But it was just finding the point of view of how to make it like, like um, contemporary, keep keep it very v- relevant to now, but also sure. have like that kind of twist that I like. Yeah. And I went back to what I like, which is, you know, John Waters, Divine, yes. un, Unhinged Women. Mm-hmm. You know, my favorite film is Death Becomes Her and you can oh, get yeah. more unhinged if you tried. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so I've kind of um, put that into my into my aesthetic really. yeah and what's funny is a lot of the stuff I talk about now not necessarily, not necessarily talking about like women um and the way women are treated in general mm-hmm. it's more kind of like um taking that that idea of being the perfect the perfect woman sure um and turn up turn up on its head by being a man in drag and singing songs that might allude to this this perfect woman or this perfect wife being mm-hmm. you know a bit a bit too sexy or a bit too a bit too too much a bit, too much a bit too yeah. much actually say that no this woman can be way too much and still be amazing so that's right so it's, and that's those those are gifts yeah things that are quote unquote too much a lot of times they're uh, branded that by people who are envious or jealous of the power or the magic or the joy that those things that are quote too much bring yeah exactly because because like the only women i know are too much and they're, they're all extra they're all mental i'm like yeah that's great i actually love that yeah. so yeah it's just taking those kind of ideas and putting them into a drag character yeah um and like showing that through her clothing like she's like like she, she could be a bit murderous one day but she's a bit too sexy and she's a bit too cute Do you, i mean there's there's so many things that she can be a bit too much of, sure there's a lot works. of different guys yeah, yeah yeah exactly yeah. that um and i think that for me was definitely my, my kind of brand new point of view that I wanted to push out there. But again, that could also take on like a political edge as well. Sure. Um, so it's all kind of influenced by what's happening right now and how does today's world affect affect that woman who, who kind of sits in this kind of 1950s way, but actually she's now got this new kind of more contemporary yeah. edge to it. Do you know what I mean? It's just taking all those different facets really. Yeah, and so. then harnessing them and then yeah, harmonizing yeah. them together. And that is political because if you think about it, John Waters stuff is incredibly political. Mm. I mean, the ultimate uh, example really is Hairspray. Yeah. Because it, it, it uh, like we talked about earlier with the drag giving through a message, I mean, the message of Hairspray is mm. incredibly heavy Huge. and so complex. And still relevant. Yes. It's like, like it's still, it's probably the one film which is still completely relevant. Yeah. And, you know, in a, you, you can take out the race and just put in gender or put in sexuality mm-hmm. or put in religion. Do you know what I mean? It, I think the race is just like, the, the race of these characters is actually just like a buffer of, okay, cool, we've got black and white, but how about if we chucked in, you know, gays and straights or, yeah. you know, non binary and binary. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's, yeah, it's, it's great. It's so relevant now. Because all the, the good people, the heroes, they're just accepting of everyone else do you remember the first time that you saw john waters film so my first John Waters film would, would have been hairspray um yeah and i, and I remember I, yeah i do remember watching it when i was very young well, how was i was about 13 or 14 mm-hmm. something like that. and i remember just going what is this because because i was still i think i was only just get, getting into theater at that age yeah. i wasn't i wasn't um completely like um well, I, think, I think my first show when i was in year eight which would have been the eighth grade i don't know yeah. um I was would have been like twelve or something mm-hmm. like that, um, so I was only just learning about what theatre was because when, when I was younger, I'd never been to a theatre, never been to really? a show. Okay, yeah. I saw like musicals on on telly, like uh, like Mary Poppins, sure. Oliver and Annie. But yeah. I'd never actually seen one live. Never been in one. I think I'd just been in one at school. So and obviously little plays in like primary school, but like my first like this is a real you no, know, this is a real musical. Yeah, I remember watching that film and going, oh my god! And again. I saw people who looked like me. I was like, there are black people in this. This is amazing. That's um, a major thing. Seeing yeah. yourself represented mm. is a major thing. Yeah. And also I got excited because I didn't realize that, that Ricky Lake was in it. And I was a huge Ricky Lake fan. So I was like, ah, <gasps> Ricky Lake's in it. Yeah. So that was amazing. So I, yeah. And I was just like, this is amazing. I didn't, I didn't even clock that, um, that Divine was playing, um, you know, Edna. Yeah. I was like, I don't, I, I don't, is that a man? I didn't. I, that, it, did, it didn't even matter. I don't really, think. Yeah. I, I don't think it even. It is it even like, registered. Yeah, yeah, I don't think it even registered. I was like, I'm just watching this a very kind of larger than life character. Yeah, and um, a brilliant actor. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I was like, okay, cool. This is fine. Um, so 
yeah, it was one of those films. I was like, this is amazing. But again, I was watching that and so many other different random things. Yeah. You know, Death Becomes Her and all, the, all these things. I was like, this is all amazing stuff. Yeah. Um, that and you I think, later, when you look back at it, you can see the through line. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That. And even just see, seeing it on the West End and seeing it live as well, you go, oh my God, this is, you know, it, it takes you back to a place where you go, this is why I love this type of theater or mm -hmm. this type of film or this type of acting because there's yeah. something for me i i get the humor i get the language mm -hmm. i get what they're trying to say yeah um speaks to you yeah exactly and then there's stuff like um you know serial mom oh, which yeah. i am obsessed with like absolutely obsessed with. it's my favorite film uh one of my favorite films and i was just like this is this is a great style of theater yeah um i mean i've not seen every single john Waters film no, just but that's yet, fine you know i mean that the great thing about that is that you still have more to, more discover. to discover that's the fab thing yeah about that. i have a couple robert Altman movies it's one of my favorites oh and i i'm almost saving them you yeah know, thieves like us there's a couple yeah and i'm like i'll get to those yeah, it's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah 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 but yeah it's just it's just great i think um I think I think it's gone a bit too um, cotton candy, cotton wool at the moment. Like, oh, we, we've, we've got to protect the minds of everybody. Shut up. Let's let's just go back to when it was like, you know, filth, and it yeah, you, right. and things weren't so serious as well. Yeah, you, you know, you're allowed to kind of let your imagination run wild a bit because it's it's just it's just film. It's just it's just a script and some actors. It's right. not real. Um, so yeah, yeah. And what's funny too, because sometimes we think like the modern age, the modern year is the most progressive, the most uh, adventurous, the most transgressive. But then you look back and sometimes you think, wow, wait, John Waters actually can't get a film financed right now. Mm -hmm. However, think about when New Line put up whatever it was for Hairspray. It was still a small budget comparatively. Yeah. The Universal made Crybaby. The budget mm. was huge compared to some of his other yeah. films, right? And the fact that there was this uh, willingness to fund these kind of mm -hmm. things. We're going to take a moment out from the show right now. I believe during recording there was a technical issue that had to be worked out. But what a perfect opportunity this affords us to talk about BetterHelp.com. Now remember that's help, H-E-L-P, not health. It's BetterHelp. Com. And what is BetterHelp about? Well, it's not a crisis line. It's not self-help. What it is, is professional counseling done securely online. Maybe there's something interfering with your happiness, you know, like a pandemic. Or maybe you have a sort of mental roadblock about something, which of course in this time is only too easy to have. I certainly, as you know, I've detailed in certain episodes of Live from Lockdown, have had a couple of uh, big moods that were not terrific moods. So maybe you're in the same boat. If so, BetterHelp can help assess your needs, then match you with your own licensed professional therapist, and you can start communicating with them in under 48 hours. Once you sign up, you can log into your account anytime and send a message to your counselor whenever you feel you need to. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, which is good because who wants to leave your house these days? Sometimes we can't. And BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches so they make it easy and free to change counselors if you need to. That's really important too because sometimes you don't get the right match, but BetterHelp makes sure you will. In addition to being more affordable than traditional offline counseling, financial aid is available. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. And don't we all? I think we all want you to start living a happier life today. I, I would like to have a happier life today. And I think you want one too. So, visit BetterHelp.com slash WV. Of course, that's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash WV. And join over a million people who are taking charge of their mental health with the help of experienced professionals. And guess what? There's a special offer for Whimsically Volatile listeners anyway. You get 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash WV. So we just paused for a second for a mild technical issue, but then we were talking about editing and writing mm. and, and composition. And then we got into the thing about how editing is really part of the writing process. Yeah. And it's really almost as important as getting the first word down well, because- edit, Editing can, can make or break your piece, I think. Absolutely. You because, so you were saying sometimes it's hard to know where to start. Oh God, something. sometimes I literally don't even know where to start with something. So yeah. I'll, be, I'll start writing something. I'm like, what am I even writing? And you kind of second guess yourself and go, <sighs> I'm going to stop because this is not good. And, but it's like, you need to get into that mindset of just carry on, just carry on because you don't know what's going to come out after that. So yeah, yeah I, I'm, I, th I feel like I'm still learning how to just write and sure. Get I it, think we all are get it down. Yeah. all the time. And it's a, it's a never ending journey. Really. It's an evolving monster, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I think it's just uh, trusting in yourself in the process and also realizing that sometimes your process 
be a million different things you know mm. like recently when the drummer from rush passed away yeah uh, i got really stuck into the documentaries on them because i i love them so much yeah. and i always have but i haven't listened to them in a long time mm. but i i sort of um reacquainted myself with the work and what the lyrics were about yeah. and everything and i just remember thinking I, I should be doing something i should be working on it. no 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 this is your process yeah you're thinking about certain things and then this is um energizing you and it's giving mm. you a sort of push in the direction that you were going anyway and and all of that and yeah. i think allowing yourself to have those moments where it's not again on paper what you should be doing it is what you should be doing i always wonder if i'm still finding my process like what yeah. is my process like you know i have always oh, you know people you hear people say oh i, lo I love your process i love the way you work it's like but what is the process how did you find it <laughs> right, who right. gave you the process yeah. Like, oh, like, so yeah i think but again, still who makes the rules no one makes the rules, yeah. baby. You're right. No right? one makes the rules. I actually am like, yeah, I think I'm still kind of finding what, what my process is. May, maybe I already have it, but I don't know what it is. So it just happens, but I'm not realizing that I'm doing it. Maybe yeah. that's it. I don't know. I but don't that's know. the thing. I think that that's very common. I, I, it reminds me of uh, when Paul McCartney said that he never learned to read or write music mm. on paper because he said, well, I'm just uh, suspicious or uh, superstitious rather that that will interfere with what I do. And so he, I mean, he's written classical pieces. Oh God, stuff. some of the best songs in the world. Exactly. But he doesn't read or write in the traditional sense. I didn't know that. Isn't that oh, amazing? Yeah. Yeah. And, but he just follows whatever it is that he does. And I, like I always say about Paul McCartney, he's still underrated. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> still underrated, but I love his money. <laughs> <laughs> and he still has um, thousands of songs, unreleased yeah. songs in the vault, just like, you know, Prince or something like that. God, can, can you imagine that kind of like greatest hits album that, that never got made? Right, like, I know. <gasps> I know, right? Like oh in the God. alternate universe yeah. of those songs. Like what if this was that? And what if that was that? But the, Did the, you the see things... that movie about um, when that guy gets electrocuted or something? Yesterday or something like that, I Yesterday, think it's called. Yeah. I want to see that i haven't seen that i haven't seen it either but i'm gagging to see it and um the actor in it is amazing it's an amazing premise too. yeah it's great yeah the beatles the, never existed and like, he knows all their songs and the, yeah it's incredible it's what would have happened what could have happened yeah, which exactly. is something that sometimes we can eat ourselves up with right the would have could have should have but really it's whatever is and whatever has happened yes is the the reality and it's more about how we maneuver from that point mm. and how we pivot from these things yeah it's yeah. like drag race you know i you know people are like oh we should, we should, we should stay longer i'm like you know i know what would happen if i stayed longer it's a should have would have could have thing if i stayed longer than three episodes um but again it's not what you do on the show it's what you're doing afterwards which is the main thing yeah and you know you know it's, it's, like, it's like drama school and there's so many people i know who have who are so talented like amazing actors who i've seen kind of do their bits and pieces at drama school and they're now doing nothing and it's like oh actually the people who were a bit kind of the underdog a bit like me a bit like the, the ones who shouldn't have of done anything afterwards yeah. um i'm still i'm still in the business i'm still doing stuff yeah um, and that's because of this determination and commitment yeah, right exactly it's the commitment to it and it's the commitment to say it's what you do afterwards which counts it's not even what you do on on that course or you know on that show it's what you're doing afterwards which is the main thing mm -hmm. so, the constant and persistent pursuit mm. of your goals your dreams however you want to classify yeah it. and i and then i this purely boils down to the fact that i've always felt like i've had to work a little bit harder than everyone else yeah it's purely just down to that but so, accepting that and saying you know what okay that's my lot in life and that's okay it's not mm. to cry about that it's not yeah. to oh why me why did, no okay if that's what i have to do that's what i have to do mm. that's it's fine thing. it's a good thing to work a bit harder for it you know what's wrong with it what, what is wrong with it and about working hard, when did you start working in acting? So um, I got my first like professional paid acting job. Um, so I graduated drama school in 2009. Yes, I am that old. Um, <laughs> and I got my first one in 2010. So I went on tour with um, Joseph and his amazing technical dream Dreamcoat, oh, yeah. the classic Andrew Lloyd Webber. Sure. Um, and I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely hated it. Did you hate it from day one when you heard it? No, I mean, the show I love. I mean, I've, I've been a fan of that show since I was a kid. Okay. But I hated the tour. I hated the people. Oh, I um, see. I did not have a great time on, on that tour. I, I reckon I had a good, I had a better time after about cause i was in there for nine months so after about six months mm -hmm. i had that last three months were actually quite fun and quite good now what do you think changed in that 
time. Oh God, I I mean, I came out of drama school a very kind of broken person because I hate this idea that when you go to train tra- drama school, they say, uh, we're going to break you down to build you up. Oh yeah, yeah. Now I've seen this happen to a lot of pe- people and it's probably a lot of people haven't haven't continued because um, they get broken down, but then they forget, oh, we're going to b- build you back up. Right, they so leave you, that part out and they just get a little too yeah. hooked on the domineering trashing the exactly. person. Exactly. Oh, yeah. you're not good enough. This is shit. This is shit. It's like, well... And again, who makes those rules, right? Exactly. Exactly. But then you've got some out, out of work actors who have... Bitter. Who, who are bitter, bitter directors who, who can't get any projects so they go into teaching but they forget, actually, we need to not break these young kids down. Um, or work out their weird... Yeah, know, we, need, we, we need to uh, work on we need to work on what what's great about them. Yeah, um, and build up build up stuff which isn't great. That, that's that's how I think anyway. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's so, what teachers should be doing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I went into that into that job very kind of broken in terms of I didn't I didn't know who I was. I didn't really know how to um, harness really, the. Uh, energies and, yeah, yeah. But on top of that i didn't know how to really connect with these other guys in the show who i, who I was working with because yeah. obviously they they've been working in like professionally for say a year so sure they, so they've already been out they've already seen it and done it whereas i was like like a deer in headlights kind of thing so i went in there and i i really didn't feel like myself on, sure. on, that, on that job i enjoyed being on the stage and doing the show yeah but it was everything else you know surrounding it yeah and, and it was a uk tour so i'm going to all, all these random places in in the uk i didn't know anyone so you just kind of like what the hell's going on here dislocating yeah yeah, yeah. and then so it, but then after that I, I had a shift because there was another couple of guys in there who joined with me and they mm-hmm. and they were kind of feeling the same kind of way so we all kind of like teamed up yeah so we started slagging off everyone in the cast yeah. and well after <laughs> after that i was like this is great now now i feel like myself again yeah um you need a little community. You just need yeah, exactly. If yeah. it's just three of us, we all yep. kind of had the same mindset. Of, we hate everyone here, yeah. so it's just like above. And um, and I think that kind of helps in the whole kind of drag realm that you are. Just, you, oh sure. You, you rip the piss out of everybody, yeah. But it all come. It all comes from the heart. Well, when we rip the piss out of these guys, it came from the heart. Completely. Well, sure. You know, I was uh, one time in this band. I um, I played drums and year, oh, okay. And years ago, I I joined this band that mm. had a record deal, and I I joined them, but then mm. they lost it because they were so irritating to the label boss that they managed. To the one band that got dropped from this uh, oh so this project, this group. But I met one of my greatest friends in life because he was the other person who was like, these people are out of their minds. Insane, yeah. And we realized that, no, we weren't wrong. They were yeah, wrong. exactly. And we could talk about it. It was like our secret little union, you know what I yeah. mean? And we helped each other out when we were freaking out. We're like, we're just going to get to the end of this and then we quit and yeah. it's going to be fine. Yeah. And it's amazing how in those situations where there can be dire circumstances or you're thinking, oh no, I made the wrong choice. No, somehow you went, there's something here and it wasn't what you thought it was going to be, but it's this other thing that comes from it. Exactly that, exactly that. And you know, and you know, Again, this is an age thing as well. You 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 go out there in the world and you want to just do all, all this amazing work. You want you want to do these projects and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes you're not going to be put with people who are your cup of tea. Not going right. to be not going to be put with people who are your energy. Who 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 even get you? Like a lot a lot of time, people just won't just won't know what the hell you're talking about, where you come from. Right. So so you either you either clam up and go right for the next six, six months, I'll just be a feet like a fetal position person. Yeah, and be like, yeah, yeah. sure, whatever you know. Or you go no, fuck you. This is this is my. They're not going to dim my me. shine. I'm going to be yeah. me. And actually, you know, the the people who were who were kind of making me feel a certain way on that. Actually, I look at them. I go, "You're all very boring, yes. and you're all very vanilla." And actually, um, I was the one who, who was hilarious. Yeah. I just let you overshadow that with your with, with your bullshit, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. But again, um, again, I always think: Can you imagine go, going back in time and know, knowing what you know now about yourself? Oh, right. and being Like, you know what? This is this is bullshit. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It'd be yeah. great. But but you then know, again, it's like the thing they say about the butterfly effect that you can't really change. If one thing changed back then, yeah. you wouldn't be where you're at now. Exactly. You can't get to where you are now without all, all that those stuff. steps. Exactly. And you can look back at your life and see these this thing that seemed like a crazy mess. You know, at the time you go. Oh, Oh, no, what have I done? I, no, but now you can look back and you can see a linear path from yeah. each step to each step to now. Absolutely, exactly yeah. that. So, yeah, so, you know, drive a drama school, and first job, second job, either way, um, I can look back and go, it wasn't the best time, but 
I was the best I could have been at that time. Exactly, you were doing the most you could do. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think that's why a lot of people go, "Oh my god, you're so you're so like you're so inspiring." And now I'm like, "Well, I don't sure, but thank you." But it's just because I'm not in my twenties and not and not in my head about stuff. I'm just kind of like. Eh, is is what it is. Yeah, um, there's a tremendous power in that. Yeah, and I think people who are who are in their head and are quite young see people like me as a kind of inspiration because. Well, uh, you know, you don't have to diminish that. Though. That's a real no, thing. No, I know, but I think I think I still have this kind of thing of like I I do very very comments. I'm like, oh my god, it's it, I still like, find am it, I worthy of that? Yeah, admiration. Uh, am I worthy of that title of, of inspiration? That. Yeah, I definitely yeah. have this kind of thing of still like okay, thanks, like it, yeah, because I feel like oh okay great that's nice that you think that but i don't really know so i just kind of sure like, it's hard to it accept to it's hard to accept yeah and again like it's, it's very new to me it's yeah, very new of course this kind of thing of people going i love you so much and it's like thanks but, uh, <laughs> don't, don't but you don't know about this other you, stuff you don't know about, exactly so yeah. but that's okay because that's not that's not the important thing. Yeah. It, it takes time, I think. Yeah. I mean, if I was trying to be like a life coach, I'd be like, right, I, I own it all. Yes, I'm very inspirational, but I'm not. I'm just but trying that, to be- But that's, that can also be the, the trick that screws people up when they buy too much into that, you yeah. know? We'll, we'll see how, we'll see how the next kind of year goes. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Maybe we can both ruin those things. <laughs> I know, but, well, Hopefully on this episode. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Done. <laughs> Cancelled. Ah, uh, finished. <laughs> Cancelled. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, after you started um, enjoying the tour, what was the next step? Oh God, I left, which was the best day of my life. Yeah. I went, bye. <laughs> see yeah. you later. That was the end of you assholes again. Sometimes, I've been, and again, sometimes at the end of a process like that, the end is so wonderful. And you can, you know, okay, this is not my people. These are not my people. This is not my situation, but I'm going to stay here. I'm not going to give up yeah. and I'm going to get to the end. Yeah. I always say to myself, you are doing this for X amount of time and you're staying in there. I've never once quit, apart from like shitty jobs, like, like working at Pizza Hut or something. Oh, that's, yeah. But, but, but if it's like a performance thing, I am staying until that date when I say I'm staying until here. Right. And I stay. I've I, committed I, and that's that. Yeah, like yeah. I literally don't, even though I might have days I'm like, I don't want to be here today or that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. Sick uh, or whatever. Everyone, everyone's pissing me off. Yeah. I stay, I yeah. stay, I'm, you know, because it's only, it's this, in the whole grand scheme of life, it's a little sliver. It's, yeah. it's a sliver of nothing. Um, so what did I do? I just kind of had, had like a, a couple of weeks off and I just jumped into doing like fringy jobs, like little kind of plays here and yeah. there, little musicals. And just kind of just doing the whole kind of I'm an actor kind of thing and wait, waiting for the phone to ring, auditions. Sure. You know, flunking auditions and it be, and me just being like really shit in auditions and stuff and kind of, learning how to audition for things sure and, and sometimes those things that feel like massive failures and we can just mm. kill ourselves in, in mentally about it later you can look at it and say that wasn't the right thing for me yeah i always go by that and my other side is if i smash an audition but i don't get the job i say well the job was going to be shit anyway the people were awful i always make, make sure that i make, I always believe that everyone in there was awful anyway so <laughs> it was going to be a terrible the money's crap uh, do you know what I, mean? I always make sure yeah. i'm like it was awful it was good that you didn't get it yeah and also sometimes if there's one of those things if you had gotten that thing maybe you wouldn't have gotten the other thing that led to this other exactly, thing exactly yeah. exactly um so yeah i just did bits and bobs and i got i got a few auditions here and there i was doing bar work and waitering and yeah. you know i worked in harrods for a year which was the worst year <laughs> of my life when well, now why tell me about what's the scene describe it to hate, me well have, have you been to harrods i have not i have to go check it out it's one of the many I places mean, i've not been in london harrods is harrods is a fun experience for like a day or to so. go to not to work at to go to I don't want to go. I don't want to work in Harrods anymore. Like if I like if I go there, I want to. If I walk into the building, I want to walk through the front doors, be yeah. greeted by some hot men um, in like you know sexy versions of the Harrods outfit, yeah. with, like, their asses out, and their cocks out. <laughs> so, like, very nice. um, I guess I got to go over there. Right? I know, <laughs> extra in Harrods, and you know you want to go to the perfume bit. You want to have some some food and a bit some champagne. You want to be very bougie with it, Jeremy. You know I mean? Be like, I've I've got a few bob. I'll go and treat myself. Go buy a little bag there, some shoes, whatever. But when you work there, <laughs> whole oh different story. my God, yeah. going back to Wally, when we're just the fat people yeah. in the lounge and going around in circles, yeah. you have to wear black. Um, 
And obviously that's the uniform, it's great, but like it feels like it just strips you of all all personality. No distinguishing characteristics. No, yeah. nothing. No earrings, no 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 crazy haircuts. It's just like you would wear black, you are a robot. Yeah. I'm not knocking I'm not knocking Harrods. I don't want to get sued by Harrods because I can't afford you can't, <laughs> can't afford to give me anything, Harrods. You've got enough cash. But <laughs> But um, if you're listening, we love sponsors. So yeah, if you want to yeah. Thank you, yeah. Please sponsor. <laughs> but if you're but if, but when you do retail I think retail especially is oh yeah is li- is life soul consuming destroying. soul destroying the hours oh my god like i have to wake up because i live in north london so i'd have to wake up at five to get to there for for like a seven Oof. or seven or eight a.m shift 15 yeah. minute breaks that kind of stuff 15 two, two 15 minutes Oof. and one half an hour Oof. it's in your and that's the day yeah it's, and then somehow you have to figure out how am i going to get lunch if i didn't bring lunch already so that's another step that you have then to add there's, on the then there's the cafe the staff cafe upstairs but it's constantly busy right so if you want to get food that's 15 minutes to get food 15 minutes to eat and you're like okay i'm done now um, and there's no eating on the sales floor and yeah. there's no no there's no accommodations for like actual human needs mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. so yeah so i was working in the the children's book area which was nice. I went to, uh, which was nice. I mean, I had a lot of people lots of nice colors around. You know, the it was color, nice for me because yeah. I was like, actually, I know, I know I'm like wearing black, but there's so many colors and words here. I'm like, this is great. <laughs> I, I used to actually read the books, but this is great. But I was like, maybe I should read a children's book. I mean, maybe I should write a children's yeah. book. Who knows? And yeah. This is before drag was so I hadn't even started doing drag. Yeah, we were still point. trying to figure out exactly figure which out thing. Yeah. What, what the hell's going on? Um, and then uh, there was this girl, this girl who I was working with, and she was a massive twat. <laughs> I want to say the scene word but i won't sure sure but my god she was a twat to the point where i actually called her i said you're just you're literally just a massive beep uh-huh, you're yeah. a massive guy and i was like i just I, and she literally made me want to like she made me want to just go mental one day yeah. so i was like i need to leave here so Gotta I, get a rip, I went from energy. full-time to part-time and i said listen i can't do part-time kind of do one day a week yeah. so Can i, I just down, walk through once in a while and then yeah uh, so i went i went down to a sunday shift and that was great and when i did that i was like okay cool i need to try and find something else that i like to do so i was doing like promotional work like handing out flyers and stuff like i like i found more joy giving it do you want a flyer then that's just standing sure. on the on the shop floor because you're actually interacting and you're able to um and use i'm good at it as well per- personality I was, yeah. I was good at yeah. the flyering i yeah. was good um because i was able to be loud and use my personality a bit and then i decided from then i was like i need to get back on the stage at that point i wasn't actually um auditioning for it my agent was shit at that point so mm-hmm. i wasn't actually auditioning for anything so i thought let me do some stand-up comedy. Let me just try and do something. Sure. Um, just as a means just to get back on the stage in yeah. some shape or form. Um, and I started doing that. And then that was when I got asked to do a, a gig in drag at Halloween. And oh, okay. boom, Vinegar Strokes is born. So and, literally- And just to, with the comedy thing, describe the first time you went on stage to oh, do- Oh, it was amazing. Yeah. I got, I got, I think I got like a stand ovation from a couple of people. Amazing. I yeah. like two people. I was like, thanks. Still. <laughs> it was I had a shit hot 15 minute set. Yeah. Oh no, shit hot five minute set, sorry. Um, and did it. And I was like, yes, and was, yes, yes, yes. Was it an open mic situation? Open mic situation. I, I applied. I went, I'm just going to apply and then see what happens. Yeah. And did it. It was amazing. I wore like a little blazer, a little bow tie. And I was like, let me just make sure I've got myself a little brandy thing. Sure. So I've got a little brand of a blazer, bow tie. Um, I think I've still got the footage of it, actually. Um, and what was it like when about when you were about to go on stage? What was the feeling that you had? I was shitting myself. Because yeah. bear in mind, I hadn't been on stage for a year. Sure. And you're going on stage in a completely different form. Oh, in a pub for the drunks. And I don't know if I'm even funny enough to do this. I don't know if I don't know if the material's fine. I've just written this material and gone, that will do. Did it. Yeah. Breathed. Yeah. Did it. And you step <laughs> through the fear. Yeah. That's the key to so many things. But I think because I'm used I'm used to that kind of fear though. Yeah. I'm used to it from when I was a kid, just doing like a musical at, at school or doing um doing stage. Like I'm used to that kind of feeling of fuck I'm doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm so I'm used to that feeling. So I didn't feel like I was, I was in jeopardy. Really? Yeah, it, it, I didn't. It actually, I actually felt safer stepping onto a stage than stepping into Harrods. <laughs> no, that makes sense. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. It's weird. Yeah, it reaffirms that you you've got a natural personality. That people can kind of like connect to, and people yeah. go, oh. So my whole life just re- revolved around doing um, stand up as much as I could. How did that take form? What was the schedule like then? So you start, you do the 
the first one yeah and then you feel the feeling afterwards and you're like okay i'm into something yeah here. and then it kind of took me a couple of weeks or like a month or so to get another another gig because obviously the waiting list is so long for most places. You're like, okay, right, now I have to wait another six months, or yeah. not six months, like another six weeks or whatever. So you had to wait for a, a slot to come up that I could just go and do. Um, I would try and write some new material for every single one. Yeah. Um, obviously, ch chuck away the stuff that I didn't like, use stuff like that worked really well. Yeah. And do some bar work, waitering, promotional jobs, flying, whatever. Sure. Just, it, just in around the gaps. Like, just, around just to fill the, yeah. the gaps for cash. Yeah. But my whole life was like, I need to get back on the comedy stage. Need to do more, need to do more, need to do more. Um, and then when um, I'd, be, and I'd done that for about a year and a half and I'd started to integrate like um, songs in there as well. Mm. So it became more of a cabaret based thing as well, which was great. Um, and then, then I got offered the gig to do it in drag for Halloween. I was like, no. <laughs> and what happened? Who Absolutely was it that, that offered you this? Um, a friend of mine. So my friend, um, Kevin, who is a drag queen called Fr Fronica Green, mm. um, he had just started doing a bit of drag, like going out. I think he was having a lot of sex and drag as well <laughs> in Singapore. Oh, okay. So, um, so I'd seen him do it on his, on his, on his Instagram. Um, not Instagram, that didn't exist. Um, Facebook or on MySpace? Facebook, or, yeah, on yeah, Facebook. Yeah. And I was like, oh, um, oh, I'd love, uh, you look amazing. Let, let do it for a laugh together one night um he was like yeah sure 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 um and then he got back to london and we ended up doing um like a bit of makeup and stuff and his brother who was who run who ran a bar in east london um he was like oh do you want to come and do a, a gig, gig for a halloween night and i was like absolutely not i'm, I'm, not, I'm absolutely not doing drag you're ridiculous i'm a comedian now i am How a, dare you? I'm oh, a yeah. very non-famous comedian i'm refined i'm uh, refined i've got a dicky bow tie on and a blazer how dare you think i'm gonna wear a wig you're mental um i'm gonna look terrible in drag what are you on about he goes oh, okay well I'll, I'll give you like 70 quid for it great what, what time do you need me i'll be there because i was like you're paying me money to do comedy i wasn't even thinking of the drag i was thinking comedy and doing yeah. drag amazing yeah um, i'm getting paid for it amazing so um i ended up um taking the gig um kevin helped me do some makeup yeah they, they, they lent me a wig i got like a really shitty black dress off ebay we were going for like <laughs> um american horror story coven oh sure okay kind of vibes. yeah um I got my first pair of heels, which I was like, I can't walk in these. They were like a size too small. So my feet were like <laughs> Gollum's claws by the end of it. And then, um, and I was like, oh, this is very good. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm, in fact, I'm really enjoying it. What's hilarious is it kind of brought back a lot of memories of when I was a kid, when uh -huh. I used to not necessarily dress up as a woman, but dress up as different characters. So these different random characters that were kind of like sketch characters. Or yeah. To sketch tv whatnot sure so oh yeah sketch tv yeah i'm, I'm a huge fan of that huge, it's saying that live sctv and, and yeah, what are some of the british ones that both select is my my absolute oh, okay. favorite um it's like very kind of celebrity um like just taking the piss out of celebrities gotcha. but again it's to the most extra degree like they've got christina aguilera as a scouser uh -huh. pure, purely because she spelt dirty with two r's so it's dirty <laughs> that's pretty because it is they've got Ke kelly osborne because obviously she's she's like transatlantic born in the uk yeah. but lives in america so she'll, she'll talk like hi i'm kelly clark i'm, sorry, I'm kelly osborne how yeah. and and when she gets angry she'll be like you fucking cunt <laughs> oh, I, oh, you no, fuck you can say yeah that's I right. say, yeah, well, yeah. you fucking cunt you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. and she'll go straight into like this kind of manculian um english accent it's yeah, yeah. so funny so yeah Bo select was my favorite I have to check that out. Um, oh, yeah, you should. Like, it's yeah. very old school. It's very, it's so weird, but it's yeah. great. Because I know a lot of the British comedy stuff from like the early eighties, like the Young Ones. Yeah, and, Young and, Ones. And the comic strip presents. I'm yes. a huge fan of that. Yeah, Adrian Edmondson, Rick May, all all those. Yeah, the Nigel was, Planner. Yeah. And when I was growing up, there was a lot of like black comedian, like black sketch TV, which was the real McCoy, oh, which okay. was all these like black comedians. Um, well, there was blouse and skirt as well. That was one. Uh, there was another one, which I can't remember the name of now, but um, yeah, all these kind of really cool um, black comedians of yeah. like, the 90s. We always say like back in the day is like, you'd, you'd never catch a funny black person after, oh. until after 11 o'clock. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So again, that, that's what obviously changed now, which is great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I, Love the sketch side of it, and I was like, "This kind of works for me now." The drag kind of works, and in essence, it's a sketch sort of thing. It, yeah. You're putting on this thing 
this premise, if you will, mm. which is what sketches are really just premises. Yeah, exactly that. And it was just interesting that I did the drag for the first time. Went, oh, this is really good. Actually, yeah, this fits. This feels comfortable and right. Yeah, and it feels like it kind of it would set me apart from a lot of the other kind of black comedians. I remember when I when I just come out, there were a lot of black guys doing doing comedy, um, and there was a couple of guys. So I was like, I'm going. These guys are way way better than me uh-huh. um and so i think i thought the drag kind of would be like oh this one's very different to those guys so obviously because i'm wearing a wig um, <laughs> and some lipstick but sure. yeah but yeah so it's yeah. So it's kind of yeah it kind of brought out that kind of side to me and again as, as a kid like i said because, because i was so into um into characters characters so. and, and creating characters and would you be entertaining the family or uh, no not necessarily it was just mainly at like drama school like oh you yeah, like just went before improv yeah, and that yeah, kind of stuff yeah. mainly ju- just during that I, so. so i was trying to get a handle on what age like you know because sometimes you, you entertain the family when you're a little kid and then you start um, to drift into yeah drama yeah school etc i didn't know if that was maybe no i mean i was i was quite like i always kept my stuff very separate even now i'm very much like i'll keep this stuff over here oh i see and this stuff over here now so what was family like life when you were growing up oh but pretty good i mean it was single parent family yeah. typical like kind of north london you know single parent my mom was working a, a couple of jobs um i was sick when i was a kid as well so i was like with what um i had um, heart heart issues oh, so okay. i was bored with a hole in my heart um, oh, so wow. that, that kind of got all repaired up and whatnot oh, good. and then my mum kind of took like a really kind of shitty small job because she can kind of do that and, and look after me but we were like breadline family like sure. you know paycheck to paycheck you know make sure that things are paid for and whatnot yeah. I think that's why that that also c- contributes to why I'm like, but I work a bit harder because I, cause for some reason this this career has chosen me. Yeah, um, and also that little fear, which can be a good thing, of like, well, I better not be too comfortable, better not, mm. you know. And also the whole thing of when you're thinking, well, I must knuckle down and not show too much of myself because you never know. A lot of that I feel because I, I, you know, share similarities with my family background yeah. and everything in economic situations where you have that thing that can sometimes hold you back mm. when, until you can realize that you can do both things. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. I think, you know, when you come from that kind of background and you, you're you suddenly thrust into a into a interest which is creative and you always hear there's no jobs, there's no jobs. A fallback plan. And essentially that, yeah. there, there are no jobs that like you kind of have to- <laughs> you have to make, you have to create you your have own to create thing. your own jobs, you yeah. know what I mean? Um, you do have that kind of fear of, I should probably do something else. That's why I, like, I waited about three years before I, I went to drama school because I was like, well, there's no jobs. What, 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 what am I doing? What, what else am I interested in? There's nothing else I like. like there's literally, yeah, there's right. literally nothing else I'm interested in. I like to cook, but do I want to be a cook? Do I want to be a chef? I don't. Like, yeah. I don't. It's, and there's certain things that you like them. It's like going to Harrods. It's nice to go to Harrods. You don't want to work there. No, exactly. You like, you like cooking, but if you were doing it as your job, it could take away everything that you like about it. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. So you kind of have to go, well, I could spend the next 40, 50 years doing something I don't want to do. Yeah. Or I can just give it a go and see if this happens. So, and, and then, you, you know, there's that danger that if you don't re- take the risk, if you don't go for it later in life, you would think, oh, what if I did that? That's where all that stuff comes mm-hmm. from. And that's where bitterness comes from in a lot yeah, of people. Yeah, exactly that. And I did say, you know, if I, if, if I hit 30 and nothing's happened, um, I'll try something else, thinking I'll just try a different career path. Well, I hit 30 and nothing happened, so then drag happened. So I was You're like, like... Well, 32. Mm. It'll be 32. Yeah, yeah. so I was like, <laughs> yes, I was literally like, oh, I'll try a couple of years and see what happens and then go from there. And, you know, I, I think I even tried to do drag alongside pursuing, like, something... Maybe, I think it was cooking or something like that. Yeah. But then it just... It, it, Things kept snowballing. Yeah, things sure. Kept snowballing with Took drag. Own, so, yeah. so yes. Now that now that I've done Drag Race and I've done the, probably the biggest thing you can do in drag yeah. right now, it's like I kind of have to just make it work now, don't I? Um, and I think you know, I'm choosing the right directions for myself. Sure, and still taking opportunities and still yeah. doing that with that philosophy exactly yeah. that you know i'm you know i'm kind of listening to the right people like say bianca del rio is giving me so much great advice she's amazing well she's a prime example of someone who um i think knows how to work this whole drag race game in terms of how you actually make a living out of it yeah and essentially you just gotta sell tickets and also be an incredibly hard worker yeah hard work She's she's the most generous person I've ever met. Like I yeah. go, Bianca's a bitch. She is a bitch. 
But Roy Haylock is one of the most amazing humans I've ever met. There's something, again, it's a spirit thing. There's so much, it's just something around her in which you go, I love you. Do you Absolutely, know what I mean? um, and just being, you know, I don't want to sound like a wanker, but it's such an honor just to get just to just to work with her. And oh, get I don't to know think her. you sound like, like a wanker at all. It's it's a sign of gratitude, you know. Yeah, and being uh, but it really, full it of really gratitude is. and thankfulness is um, it's a gift to us and to others. Yeah, and it really is like just to get to know her on a on a personal level from working with her a couple of times. Um, it's it's just amazing. Like, yeah. I, don't, I don't want her to ever know this because she'll, she'll be like, "Fuck you!" But <laughs> honestly, like, oh, just one of those people you just go, "I am so 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 happy I've I've just met you and got just to talk to you and be." Yeah. Um, and let's it, talk about your situation working together with Bianca. Yeah. 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 So you're currently wor- uh, working on uh, the show. So I so I've left the show now. I left. Oh, I left the me. show. Yeah. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. I left the show. Do your research. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I left the show. I said, I said, I said that to someone to report the other day. Actually, uh, we were on the red carpet at, at the NTA Awards, and I, I'm not going to drop the name because he's a twat. Um, but he goes, "You're going to say this about me now?" No, oh no, no, a gorgeous no. one. So, um, so with me, Bagger, and Davina were lined up to uh, to. Um, to talk um, with the microphone in our faces. He goes, right, we've got bag of chips, the Vivian and something wrong. I mean, me and Davina, me and Davina went, no, what are you on about? Um, I, and, I said, and, I, and I went, I, I'm the other brown one. I'm vinegar strokes. Well, he wasn't happy that I said that. Oh yeah, yeah. And white people get very upset. If you say anything about brown, white people go, oh. <laughs> they get very upset. How could you? I would never, I. <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, oh, he started talking and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm already tapped out because you can't even get our names right. Davina and was like, shall we just start again and get that right, shall we? Well, we just ignored that, plowed straight on. So I was like, I'm tapping out, tapping yeah. out. And he goes, oh, isn't uh, Mich- Mich- Michelle Versace? I went, well, actually, I think her name's Michael. So, yeah. <laughs> so um, please. Uh, he didn't yeah, like me. Yeah. But um, anyway, um, what, what was the question before? Oh, uh, I wanted to uh, talk about- Jamie, yeah. 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 So um, so I left the show about a month ago now. Okay. Uh, oh, so that's not that bad. I wasn't, you know, yeah. I was, I was in it for two years. And again, I said to myself- no, I mean, in terms of my lack of- uh, Oh, yeah. <laughs> No, you're, you're four weeks traveling. out. traveling. I got ill. You know, there's a lot Blame of things. Blame the passport. She's, she's four weeks out. No, she's uh, busy, you know. What busy. can I say? Um, yeah, so we, so I finished that a month, a month ago. And again, it goes back to the thing. I committed to two years in that thing. I said, I am staying for two years. I should have probably left in September when they said, do you want to stay or go? Because that was kind of just on the cusp of, of drag, drag Race coming yeah. out. But I was like, I I want to be here till January. I said this even before Drag Race. I want to do two years in, on this job. Yeah. Then I'm done. Um, so yeah, I did Jamie, uh, Bianca came in twice. So she did um, a summer, like a two months in the summer. Yeah. And then she just came back at the end uh, over Christmas and she she finishes at the end of February. Okay. Um, Maybe I'm going to try it. I should just go see the show. Oh yeah, go, go see it. Yeah, yeah she's, it's a great show. I'm I'm still a bit like, I can't see it yet because like, I can't even walk past the theater because I've obviously seen the, the new photos because like, I'm like, why am I not on it? But um, <laughs> yeah, it was, I mean, that job was one of the best shows I could have like, had the pleasure to work on yeah just from a just from a just from an actor's point of view yeah sure i'm playing an, i'm playing a drag queen in it. i've got three three or four scenes um so it was a nice little kind of chunk of chunk of time to be on stage sure first ever west end job couldn't ask for like it's new writing it's yeah. a new show um and for got, american folks who don't know west end is essentially broadway it's, yeah essentially broadway yeah. um I think Broadway has more theaters than we do. I don't know. Or they're bigger. They always, every time I go to okay. Broadway, I'm like, it was, it's so massive here. It's so big. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, it was one of the best jobs I've I've done. Like one one of my definite like top five shows I've done. And just the, the message of it. I think it's you know to again to have a sh- have a show on the West End, a brand new one as well. Uh-huh. Come up pra- practically kind of coming out of nowhere, really. Um, about a. 16 year old boy who wants to wear a dress to his school prom yeah. and be a drag queen Th- this show you know surpasses being about someone who's gay or being about someone who wants to wear a dress or you know be a drag queen it's actually more about um being being a true kind of, kind yeah. of authentic self right especially at such a young age as well i think a lot of us don't get the luxury of being uh, authentic self at 16 years old. Sure, absolutely. You know, and, people, and everyone can relate to that in whatever yeah. uh, stream of life that they're in. Mm, it's like Billy Elliot. Yeah. It's the same thing as Rocky. Yep. The exact same thing. Yep, exactly that. So it's, 
to work on a show with that kind of story um, and to have so many people and so many kids and adults and mums and dads come and see it and they really kind of relate to it and they, uh, they relate to someone in that in that cast and just from a kind of race point of view sure we've got you know you've got someone in there who you can literally watch and go oh that person looks like me that person sounds like me and, you know we've got I think it's fucking a revelation that we've got um, a lead character who is Muslim and singing a song called Beautiful yeah because because a lot of people who are crazy would not would not ever look, look at someone who's Muslim and go, oh, they're they're gorgeous. They're right. that. You're Muslim, and that's it. And that's it. Yeah, and it's and I think that's a revelation. And just to see this this kid in a hijab singing singing a song, beautiful, it's beautiful, it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And I think it it definitely I don't know. It just kind of changed the game of what a musical theatre character can look like or sound like. Um, And for me, it was such a pleasure to be part of it. Even though I was like, oh my God, it's been two years of the same (laughs) fucking lines for every night. But you know, know, in the grand scheme of it, how many shows a week would you be doing? Eight shows a week. And so that means that some days there's two shows, which is wild. And so the nonstop, you're banging it out every day you know so what's a day like for you uh schedule wise when you're in the thick of those two years the one show days would be me sleeping um or eating or when i was doing drag race stressing <laughs> trying trying new costumes like the, the god my god the three weeks i had when i had to get um my stuff prepared for drag race oh yeah was mental i like, can imagine yeah i don't think i had any kind of life because i was trying making calls i need this costume made i need this wig style or oh, what's it for i can't tell you but it's for it's for <laughs> it's for a project i'm doing um do you know what i mean so that's yeah. the other thing you can't tell yeah exactly yeah. so in the thick of those two years i started off just having a nice old time sleeping the odd rehearsal now and again to being like i'm stressed i have to go and do drag race um, and then when I finished Drag Race, I was like, okay, getting back to normal. But then there's also interviews and, you know, promo things I've got to record and that kind of stuff. So yeah, the, 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 the schedule was very strange. But, you know, you do one show per day, Wednesdays and Saturdays, two shows, and then Sundays you're off. Yeah. And there's a lot of gin involved in the whole thing. <laughs> I'm surprised I've even got a liver left. Like, it's, <laughs> like there's a lot of gin involved. Self-care, it's called. Self-care, self, self-pickling, self I like yeah. to call it. <laughs> right, oh, preserving yeah. yourself. Yes, absolutely. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So is that your favorite drink, a gin and tonic? I love a gin and tonic, oh yes. Yeah, any favorite uh, brand? Just, just for anyone who's going to buy just, you a drink at the bar, they should know. Um, I mean, Tanqueray is very really nice. Yeah. I love a good Tanqueray gin. Um, and, I'll t- and I'll turn to Kim Woodburn. Oh, yes, love. A nice gin. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm not that fast, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fast. Pink gin I'm into now. I wasn't I wasn't really into it before. Oh, but very, very um, fun. Flavoured gins are great. Yeah. Just, just love, love me a good gin, to be honest. I was so, amazed to see all the varieties of gin in the UK <sighs> when I first landed. It was at Heathrow at the Duty Free. Yeah. And gin is not quite the big as big a thing in the states there are a couple different varieties but over there it's more the flavored vodka flavored Mm. whiskeys and stuff but the elaborate different options i was stunned with they've got a gin bar in soho i've not been yet wow apparently they've got a gin bar it's like every over a hundred types of gins oh amazing um i'm now i'm now getting into um a little drink called a dirty martini oh okay so that's with the stuffed olives and that's uh, with the um that's with the vodka the the vermouth or vermouth is the miracles of vermouth. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Vermouth, uh, which I quite like the sound of. Yeah, right. I didn't know it was vermouth um, here, yeah. Vermouth, olive juice, and three olives. And what I've discovered is apparently the three, the olives are meant to um, represent the things that really pissed you off that day. Really? Yeah. And so you devour them. And oh, yeah. So, yeah. You, just, so, you, so you, you put them on the cocktail stick and then drop them in. And each olive, so if it's three olives, it's um, three things that really annoyed you that yeah. day. Yeah. Uh, which I quite I quite like I, I like that. I quite like that it's quite like a theatrical drink like it's a, it's a bit drink isn't uh, it? yeah right exactly I really enjoy it that's yeah, perfect yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's um, very I, dynasty yeah I had I had, I had my first one with Bianca and I was like Bianca I want a dirty martini okay we're gonna do it <laughs> okay so yeah I love it I love it yeah oh that's great now what about favorite meals because you cook so yeah. what's your favorite thing to make and serve uh, as a dinner thing i'm a big fan of italian food sure. so i love I, I mean pasta is just amazing i love it yeah 
Um, Amazing Italian food in the UK, I have to say. You yeah. know, because a lot of the, the rap on the UK for ages was, oh, the food's terrible, the food's terrible now. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that's a big thing in the States, people okay. say. And I think perhaps maybe when people were touring in the 70s or something, and like roadside cafes or whatever. I mean, the Kinks practically have a whole album written about I mean, the food know, in the UK. I mean, but. listen, like, like British food is quite... <laughs> I don't know, quite wartime, like a shepherd's pie. Which I love, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, my parents are Canadian and my mom makes a mean. Oh, okay, cool. Yes, it's very like bog standard, like mint beef, mint lamb, whatever, with potatoes. Yeah. Very kind of meat and potatoes kind of vibes. Um, Sturdy. Yeah. Yeah, sweet, sturdy. But I think in London, because obviously melting pot and that kind of stuff, uh, you do get a lot of different vibes and lots of different foods. So, yeah, for me, Italian food's great. I love Mexican food. I love food. Too. I love food, all food really. Yeah. I love a good burger and chips, yeah, or burger and fries. Yeah. Um, what else? Pizza. I mean, I eat anything. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. I love the whole spectrum. Yeah, but I think my go-to too. like comfort food is like a big bowl of spaghetti and pesto sauce. Oh yeah. Shit loads of cheese. Uh huh. And because I'm black, chili sauce. <laughs> and that's me. Like that. Like if I'm feeling like oh, just like a like a really kind of like homely comfort food. That, yeah. That's like that's like a go-to for me. Yeah. Even in like non-stop schedule-wise, you oh, just yeah. need a, a day of break on the couch yeah. and some films and that. Yeah, I'm trying to get more healthy though know, because I feel like cause especially when you're touring and whatnot. Sure. You just eat crap. It's really me. difficult because it's what's hard. open, what's available. You know. Yeah, and then your mind is on so many other things. Yeah, and sometimes like you'll be talking, like, I just know talk, talk at the moment with some of the girls and um, you know, you, you, you go from place to place, you're driven from say, Torquay to Cardiff in Wales. So by the time you get there, it's like it's like two p.m. Yeah. Um. You've got to be in the hotel. You've got to be ready by six. So you just kind of grab whatever you can on the go. Yeah. It's the last uh, thing uh, prioritized. Really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we were, on the way we went to this, this service station, and I was like, I need to eat right now because I'm gonna I'm gonna kill someone. Yeah. Yeah. I was at the full hangry, hangry yeah. yeah. moment. <laughs> so I got like went in there. I was like, okay, I want a sandwich. This, this sandwich like a like a chicken tikka sandwich. Uh-huh. It was disgusting. <laughs> it was, I was like, oh, what is this? Um, then I went to the, the counter and like they had this like these dodgy looking sausage rolls and yeah. stuff. And they, and they had this thing called a potato dog, which is basically a hot dog frankenfurter wrapped in a hash brown. And I went, oh my God. Oh, that's, uh, that looks incredible. Yeah. Looks gross at the same time. I want three of them. So I've got three of them. <laughs> I devoured all of them and I had the worst shit. After. I was like, it was so gross. Oh, no. but at the time I was like, this is amazing. Coffee, Chris, like, Every, yeah. basically yeah. I'm trying to not eat, eat, eat so many beige things. Sure. Okay. You got to eat the rainbow. Taste ha- the rainbow. Uh, taste yeah. the rainbow. Eat the rainbow. I haven't eaten the rainbow properly this week. Um, so I'm like, need to have some more vegetables and fruit. Yeah, greens can be tricky sometimes when I you don't know. have enough. And I love a good salad, but sometimes it's this thing of you're busy and you order something and you don't think to order a salad. And sometimes the salads are shit. Like you, you really gotta have a good old cob salad or something. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Um, salmon with like some lovely salmon in it is like one of the greatest yeah. things. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. So you kind of eat eat what you can. Have have your vitamins little kind of supplements and whatnot. Yeah. But yeah, touring, gym, yeah. touring's <laughs> hard. Touring's hard. Sure. Um, especially like after that, I get so hungry after doing a show. Like I'm like, I, I just want to eat everything now. So you end up eating more chips and more shit, yeah. more sausages. Because also your, your adrenaline is up and then it's the uh, whole aftercare essentially of when yeah. you leave the stage you're still it's and it's all wonderful energy it's positive but yeah. it can be overwhelming i'm sure you must have felt this at drag con too oh god yeah let's and, talk uh, about your experience at drag con drag con was amazing Wasn't i it? loved it my first time well, okay so it's the second time doing a drag con first time was in new york with the girls yeah uh, before we got announced so we kind of in new york hi just waving at people um have you heard of a drag con called meatball Oh, I love Meatball. Oh, Meep- I love oh, Meatball I love Meep- so Meatball's much. wonderful, and I was so happy to see the both of you at oh, the Battle of the I British. I am gagging to do a show with Meatball, like a whole tour, the sister sibling tour, whatever. Yeah. Because we look say, I love that everyone go, everyone would come up to me at, in New York. Meatball. I was like, I'm not <laughs> in, my, in my thickest London accent. I'm not Meatball. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sorry. I think people realize that when, when you get called the wrong drag name. Oh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But like London was absolutely mental. People were so nice to have a line because you know, there's the fear that you've got a booth and there's no queue. Oh You're yeah. Like, Where's the people? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was just nice to have people come and say hello, get get their pictures. My booth 
Well, did you see my booth? Sadly, I, I barely got to so, so many booths. It's that classic thing, which I now know after now having done the second one mm. for me, uh, is that you think, oh, great. Like for Crystal, for instance, I was like, oh, we'll see you. Jody Harsh. I was like, yeah, I'll be at your booth. And we bumped into each other mm. in the uh, uh, hallway. But we were I was on my way to the panel and she was on her way to her uh, booth. And we we're like, yeah, we'll see it. And then you don't see each other because time just goes away. And then suddenly- it just goes. Yeah. My, and I my, wanted to see everyone. You know, yeah. I wanted to well, go to my your booth. My booth was and, absolutely, check out my Instagram. My well, see at the LA one, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, the, the LA one's going nice and kind of cheap, but this one I went, I went full oh, out. Oh, okay. Um, I had a full like John Waters does EastEnders vibe. I had like a little vintage Hoover. Oh, I, yeah, I had yeah. An urn with my with, with my husband's ashes in there with Roy from the front. <laughs> Uh, I had like a c- cigarette tray with all these ciggies in there, yeah. telephone typewriter with, with, with like a like a love letter from my husband with blood splattered over it as well. <laughs> Very kind of film set. I had like a, yeah. I had like an easel outside saying v- "Vinegar Strokes in the Perfect Housewife." Oh, lovely! Like it yeah. was, it was so so good. So yeah. yeah, I had a great time kind of putting my booth together and making it. And I, I would say it's one of the best ones. Sorry, I would say it's one of the best ones. No, there's no shame in that. Yeah. No, I mean, this is the thing. I think a lot of times. Um, you know, after after doing drag race and my abysmal fashion, I say abysmal, my hilarious fashion. Well, that was on you're the talking show. what was referred to as hodgepodge. My hodgepodge fashion, yes. Which on I the love show. that you embraced that. I love it. Uh, at the Battle of the British thing, and it was a wonderful thing because that's a, a real key thing. I love These it. things that can be either deemed embarrassments or failures or whatever, you take it and it's a badge of honor. Exactly. It's ha- listen. I think it's better than a repeater badge because. You can't you can't sell your badges, but I can sell hodgepodge to, 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 to and the house. And it's yours. Command. It's mine. I love it so much. And that's the thing. I think it takes a very smart person to listen to RuPaul and go, "You've just given me something here. You've yeah. literally given me a gift here." Right. Um, and it's up to you how, how you react. If you react in a bad way, like defensive, how dare you call me hodgepodge? I'm amazing. This yeah. kind of shit. Then you've just wasted an opportunity. That I was yeah. like. Okay, cool. And I think I think what people don't realise is, is that I actually agreed with a lot of the comments that were coming my way. I agreed because I was like, like the paper dress on the last one. Yeah. I was like, I agree with you. This is this is horrible. <laughs> this is awful. Like yeah. I'm embarrassed me wearing this. But you just take it as a as as a learning lesson. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, you take it for what it is, which is which is it's hilarious. Again, what what is drag fundamentally? Some good old fabric, some makeup and a wig. If if this is so serious, there's something wrong here. Do you know what I mean? Right. So and we yeah. can get lost sometimes and, and oh, focus yeah. on that stuff and and go crazy, but that's the key to realizing exactly. that. Just chill out. And ho- so hodgepodge is literally amazing. I love it. Hodgepodge couture. There's t-shirts. There there's fans. The whole shebangs. Yeah, I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah, and it's like that thing you can't nickname yourself. It's it's similar to that. These things happen, and then you embrace them. And what's hilarious is now now I'm doing my drag now. People are like shit. She's hodgepodge no more because you know because I've definitely elevated the looks uh, like way way more. Sure, um, but that's the whole progression. We're all that's the whole always progression. progressing and learning. Always exactly that. Yeah. The past year has been amazing in terms of um, where vinegars kind of grown from yeah. obviously I thought I look, I look kind of cool but then when you put it in context go, oh actually yeah mm, yeah there is no point of view that and again it's, it's the point of view thing yeah um, and it's also the thing is you kind of have to have that feeling of like this is it I'm sickening this is perfect because that's what guides you through it's like when you first start writing songs they're going to be terrible but you have to be like this is great until you finish it and you look back and you go ooh that was not good mm-hmm. you know uh, but it's all oh, right, we said earlier about writing you just sort of barf it out and then refine it that's yep. what it's all about exactly that exactly yeah. that so yeah so yeah i was really happy with um with the outcome of my experience on drag race i do wish i stayed a lot longer that i i, I went to do snatch game i would have smashed it all the kind of performance ones i would have smashed completely sure um, and, and maybe I, I, you never know an all stars or something in the future hey, p- p- people send me all stars i'm like well yeah absolutely i, I would i would love to do all stars yeah and i think with all stars well because it is more of a performance based competition as opposed to this one where it's more how do you look sure um, i think there's a lot more of a, of a performance challenge based Base set with, up, um, yeah. With a yeah, set up with um with all stars. And also, the amazing thing is you get to do it a second time because the first yeah. time you do anything, 
even when you're trying your best, there's certain things, you, you know, you're going to have a blind spot here or mm. there. And then you have the benefit of looking back at it and saying, what would I do different? Mm. You know, and that's the great thing about being able to do something again. Yeah. So yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of quietly preparing myself for, uh-huh. for an all stars. Cause that, cause it, cause it could happen before you know it. You'd be like, oh shit, am I ready for it? Right. So I'm just kind of quietly preparing myself for something that might come. But you know, um, I think, they cast the show really well with yeah. such a good collection of people. Um, and I think the fact that the public, you know, not just in the UK, but, you know, oh, all I these mean, different places. Absolutely, home like, people are obsessed with it. We yeah. love you, we love what you've done, thank you so much. It's like, oh, that's, that's actually quite cool, it's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, think, think, fingers crossed, I'll be, I'll be working with WoW a bit more on great. some bobs, fingers yeah. crossed. But, um, yeah, it's great. It's just, it's just great to be part of part of this kind of whirlwind experience and yeah. this kind of family vibe as well. Yeah, and nice. also the incredible bonding experience that it must have been to be in such a pressurized situation yeah. with the other queens. And uh, had you, I can't remember exactly, but some of the queens you'd known before. Yes, yeah, so I knew something Wong, I knew Cheryl, I knew of Davina, um, I knew Crystal-ish. Um, a new bagger as well. So yeah. yeah, so so you I think we all knew I think we all knew at least one person in yeah. there, uh, which was quite nice. Um but it's also the, the, the bonding experience with the American girls as well. Oh like, sure, yeah. Like people like Mariah Balenciaga. Sure. Oh I, I am fully obsessed with her even more. Like she like she was always a favourite of mine from from her season. Yeah. Um and I've met her a few times now and we've we've had a few drinks together. Yeah. She knows how to drink as well. <laughs> she knows how to she knows how to drink. So so yeah, we um we've had a good old time together and had, and had some good old good old laughs. What else? She's yeah. amazing. Uh, obviously Bianca, um, Meatball, who's not even on Drag Race, but right. you know she's still part of that. Absolutely. Of that world. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So so you know what I mean? It's nice to meet even Layla McQueen. I'm like, oh, we, we have a bit of a hey, how are you? Oh, she's like, yeah. Yeah, but she's she's fell off anyway. <laughs> she can't get enough cocks in her. Fabulous. Um, fabulous. Oh yeah. No, and, and to that end, what's your dating life like? Mm. Well, dating is interesting. And dating can be in inverted quotes. You know what we're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I I have a lot of messages still to this day. Yeah. Um, a lot of messages from lots of um, sexy young men um, who want to experience a good old stroke. So, uh-huh. yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I've, I've been very, um, very busy. It's good <laughs> to be busy. Were. Busy's yeah. good. Yeah, busy good. I mean, yeah, I, you know, the a couple of bits and pieces here and there, sure. you know, um, or especially when you're on tour as well. So you, you get you get your grind ring. Like, oh hi! I'm like, oh my god, you're really strokes. Happy to be in town. For yeah, a while. I, I, uh, can, can you a calm? Yes, I can actually. I've got I've got a hotel. <laughs> so yeah, I've had I had my fair share of um, dick as as it were. Yeah, it's terrific. Really, it's yeah. really nice. It's really nice. It's lovely. Yeah, yeah it's lovely. Of course it is. Of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, what about long term relationships? Have you had uh, any oh of those? Oh my god! Or? You know what? I've never had a boyfriend. Really? Never had a boyfriend. Did you? ever want one or was it just a situation I where I feel like I wanted one and then in my 20s I went I don't really want one because I'm just like I've fun I've got time yeah and also work you know it takes a lot of energy yes yeah. exactly that and now I'm like I would like yeah I would like to have like a a little relationship moment just to sure. see how that goes so yeah we shall see I'm still very much like someone gonna come along sometimes i have the days i'm like i don't think it's gonna happen for me don't think so sure yeah but then i'm like no it will happen because i see a few couples i'm like how did you do good <laughs> how did this and that how yeah did, what is going what the fuck is going on here <laughs> so i do think it could happen at some point yeah i don't know it's just it's hard because i think a lot of people think that with your drag queen and you're famous there's a bit of a separation there from that where i'm just like I'm still very, very normal. Well, yeah, I think it's it's key not to get uh, yeah. tricked by that. Yeah, I'm not putting myself on, on the pedestal. You're putting me on the pedestal. You're you're making what I do, you know, separate. So, so just so much more oh, than what yeah. it actually right, is. Right, right. Um, so yeah, it's interesting. And then of course you got to wonder, you know, who who's actually talking, who's talking to you? What what's their motives? Uh, do, do they do they want to get to know you really? Right, do right. Do they want to borrow a wig from you? Do they want makeup tips? Sure. What what do they actually want? So a lot of it just turns into the odd kind of shag here and there. Yeah, which, which is, is fine by me. Hey, there's I'm, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I, I don't mind. Get get me rocks off. Uh, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so I've so yeah, it's very interesting to know who's kind of talking to you for what reason right and you start to be able to figure it out 
and mm. faster and faster and faster the more mm. right in this situation because yeah. people slip through all the time yeah but it's always good to be a little bit careful yeah absolutely yeah, yeah it's good to kind of still have a bit of a guard up with some people yeah um and they reveal themselves eventually. Yeah, yeah. I think again, again, this is all very new to me. This whole, sure. this whole world of being, um, you know, known having, and being known, cetera, and yeah. people and people being a fan as opposed to just being like someone you meet, not being a fan. Yeah, yeah, I mean. exactly, right. Um, but other than that, you know, shag me. I'm, I'm, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I've had a wonderful time uh, talking with this you has today. Been great. Yeah, and hopefully we'll do it again sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then maybe we'll do a movie club sometime. I will be well into a movie club. Fab, yeah. Oh my God, I'm well into that. Yes. Wonderful, we'll do that. And then you'll be in LA for DragCon and I'm sure other things. I will be in LA things. for DragCon, yes. Yeah. Yes, can't wait. Same here. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. I've, ne I've never been to LA before, so I'm like... Oh, yeah. wonderful. And are you going to stay for a little longer than just yeah, the, the three I've days? Got a, I've got a wedding A wedding I need to go to uh, on the 8th. So as long as okay. I'm there, as long as I'm at the wedding, because my friend would literally kill me. <laughs> as long as I'm there at the wedding, we're all good. So I'm, I might stay for a little, a little while. You should, because I know sometimes people just are there for the night before and then leave the morning after. Oh, and no. It, it, you I really want to have, wanna have, have time. I want to have a good old holiday. I want to go to Vegas as well for like a couple of nights. Perfect. Because even though it's mental there, I'm like, I want... I just want to go there and kind of disappear yeah. from my mind for like a couple of days and be like, what the fuck? Is and going go on? to the Rue Girl show. Yeah. Oh my God, yes. Right? Yeah, I've, seen, I've seen clips. It looks really good. It looks amazing. It looks like the production value is high. Incredible. You know, and the talent there. I mean, I did a panel at uh, DragCon yeah. with, uh, with Derek Barry and Asia O'Hara. Yeah. And it was wonderful to talk about that. And I'm looking forward to going myself. We should go together. We should, absolutely. We Let's absolutely should. We'll do that. Let's do it. Well, thank you so much, Vinegar, thank for being you. on. And look forward to the next time. Yeah.